Hello and welcome to another video of the IT Career Guide YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the difference between being a systems administrator and being a systems engineer. So I think there's a lot of confusion out there really in regards to the difference between the two positions. And let's be honest, in, in many ways, I think um, many, many companies are really just using the term systems engineer, um, not really knowing what the difference is between a systems administrator and a systems engineer. But before we get into that, let's just look at the difference and then we can talk about how it's being used in the world out there and what you need to be aware of. So the um, systems administrator is really somebody who takes on an existing system, manages and operates it and administers the system. So meaning uh, patching, maintenance, um, operational functionality and operational readiness. Um, all these pieces, keeping the system alive, keeping it working and uh, happy in a certain way. That's really the role of a systems administrator. A systems engineer is involved in designing and architecting, architecting the system. It's not a systems architect, so a systems engineer would work with a systems architect. But the systems engineer is really involved in picking the platform, identifying the pros and cons of certain pieces in regards to operating system, um, software applications being used, and the overall setup. The systems engineer is then also involved in a, bringing that system from the early stages into a production state, documenting the system, making sure that it's really ready for uh, prime time, and then handing it off to the systems administrator to take it from there and run the system as it is in production. So that's really the main difference between a systems administrator and systems engineer. Then at least many, many years ago, um, there was a question, uh, can you be an engineer or use the term engineer as your title without having uh, a college degree in engineering in, or in any type of engineering cap capacity? So I think um, that topic is out of the world, but I know it was a question early on specifically when Microsoft used the term for the Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. So I will leave that out. But um, in general, the position system engineer seems to carry more value and the position itself, just from what is required from a person doing that type of work, yes, it is more challenging. So if you are growing into an IT career and you come from help desk and you're looking for your next step, a systems engineer might be um, a level too high. It depends, of course. But in general, I would say you come from a help desk position, you move into a junior or mid-level systems administrator position. And then from there, you potentially move into systems engineering, becoming a systems engineer. Then based on your experience and how long you have been in a position of being a systems administrator or systems engineer, you, um, you grow through the ranks, you become a mid-level, a senior level, maybe even a lead systems administrator, lead systems engineer. So from an overall job market perspective, I mentioned that earlier that I think many companies don't really know the difference. Um, the managers um, these days don't necessarily know the difference. The recruiters and HR don't know the difference. And engineer just sounds so much better. So um, a lot of positions that are really systems administrator positions are titled systems engineer. So for you as a candidate trying to apply for one of these positions, it's really critical that you read the job description and um, ask appropriate questions. So um, if you really want to get into systems engineering because you have that career path mapped out for you where you want to get into systems architecture uh, and you're applying for a job that is labeled systems engineer, but in the end you're an uh, overqualified computer operator, a systems administrator, and don't take this the wrong way, I'm just trying to simplify this. Um, then it's really critical for you to understand, okay, in that position at that company, no, it's really just a systems administrator job. And it will not necessarily help me to grow into systems architecture. I think to become a successful systems architect, you need a certain number of years of experience, especially if you want to get to that level where you can carry the title senior systems architect. Um, or where you get really involved into larger scale projects, developing an entire system from the ground up, be it with data center footprint, cloud footprint, 
whatever it is, um, it requires a lot of um, experience that you don't necessarily gain with just three, four or five years being in the field. In general, the senior level, honestly, sometimes it's just handed out due to salary requirements. So they want to give you a raise, they promote you to senior systems administrator, senior systems engineer. But in the end, the work has not really changed and um, you're not really doing the work at that level. So when you go into the job market and you have your IT, uh, IT career path mapped out, be on the lookout for these job positions that really um, differ, that really show the difference and where you understand, yes, this is a position that really includes systems engineering. It will benefit me. That's where I can learn something. That's where I can take on more responsibility. A systems administrator uh, from the other side really is when you look at it, and I mentioned it earlier, it's just a glorified um, overcompensated systems or computer operator. So, and in a certain way, there is some truth to that statement. Of course, you're operating systems, uh, you're operating applications, you're managing existing infrastructure. And um, Computer operator is a little downgraded, really. It goes back many, many years, I think, really, where you just click buttons in an application and you operate the system. The systems administrator is responsible for more. The systems administrator is responsible for the platform, potentially, so meaning the infrastructure, servers, network, um, anything related to that um, is also responsible for the application to run. So let's say you would troubleshoot an application that is running out of memory. Um, maybe identify that there is a memory leak and um, there is a software bug that needs to be fixed to prevent the memory leak from happening. So that's where the systems administrator comes in. You um, need to have good troubleshooting skills. You need to be able to respond quickly and calm under stress when the system goes down. So there are different challenges compared to the systems engineer. And in a certain way, it can be an exciting job. It sometimes can be reactive, um, but it also helps you to uh, turn that reactiveness into an approach to become more proactive. And I think that's where if you grow and you look at it from that angle, um, that's where your next step then will be that you move into systems engineering. So when you go past the day-to-day -day work as an administrator and um, now you understand the application with all its layers and um, then you start working with systems engineers and systems architects and you provide valuable input to them, that opens the door for that discussion, hey, Am I ready to be a systems engineer? And what will that ne next step look like? So I hope this uh, was a good introduction into really telling you the difference between a systems engineer and a systems administrator. Just be aware when you're out in the job market, um, not everything that is titled as a systems engineer is a systems engineer position. So you have to ask questions, you have to read and decode the job description and just make sure that it's the right step for you. The title itself will not turn you into a real systems engineer. That comes from experience and from doing the work. And um, with your next career move, you wanna make sure that you are doing the right step in the right direction. So I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them down in the comments below. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.